Hey guys, it's Helping Hands here bringing you a USA Commander video. This will be based on the Airborne Company Commander and we'll be going through the unit's abilities, how much they cost and how it's best to use them. So first guys, we'll start with the Airborne Company. The Airborne Commander provides Pathfinders at zero command points, you can call them straight away. On two command points, you can call on a power drop of a MG, the 50 cal. On three command points, you can call on the paratroopers. On a three as well, you can also power drop in the anti-tank gun for the Americans. And also, when you get to 12 command points, you can call on a P-47 rocket strike, which is very effective against armored targets. So guys, you've chosen the Airborne Company. Let's get into it. So the Pathfinders, if you want to call them in, you just uh, click on their ability and you left click anywhere on the map and that's where they're going to rally to. So then let's spend 290 manpower and they will now come on off map. As you can see, they're coming now on to the map like so. They can't be called in by clicking into a building and then they're peering out of a building like some other units can do, like Stormtroopers. They don't have that ability. They just call coming from off map. They have um, the setup beacon ability and they can hold fire. So what does the setup setup beacon ability do? So guys, we're building a um, power finder beacon over here, like so. So this beacon has quite a few th useful things. It can reinforce paratroopers. So if I was to call on a paratrooper squad. So first of all, paratroopers can be called in and they'll be, be able to call in anywhere on the map wherever you want. However, if you call them in next to a, um, a beacon, they'll have a lot more accurate airdrop coming in. Um, and if you move away from it, you can see it's, it's uh, you know, the, the drop will be a lot more spread. And if you drop them on top of like trees and stuff where it says red, they'll likely die when they land. So you want to avoid that. So if I was to call them, like if I was to try and drop the paratroopers on this area. So here they go, they're going to land. And you can see a couple of the men dying on land there on top of the uh, hedgerow. Like now the beacon acts as a reinforcement point for airborne troops, which is good. So you can bring the squad over here. And then you can press reinforcement here, get your squad back up to full strength. They cost 28 manpower to reinforce. They just jump it, they, they power drop in like that, so like so. So if I was to put a grenadier over here, and I couldn't, uh, you know, if I put on Fog of War, we're not we're going to lose vision of it, right? So Fog of War enable. However, because that grenadier is in range of my beacon, you can see my beacon's range is this circumference, we can tell that there's a grenadier on the mini-map, even though we can't physically see it. So then we bring up our tactical map, and then we know exactly what unit it is. So for the mini-map, you can't see what the unit is, it's just a red dot, but bring up tactical map, and there you go. You know what exactly unit is, and there you know how to deal with it. So that's how useful a tactical map can be when trying to spot units through the fog of war without knowing what they are on the mini-map. So guys, I also wanted to just say that the uh, the beacon does have some kind of uh, some camouflage. We've just made the beacon an enemy beacon here, and we have to get close to it to be able to spot it. So you could put this beacon, so yeah, there we, now we know where it is, and we can, we can blow it up. Um, but yeah, you have to be fairly close to be able to see it. So if you were, were cheeky with this, you could probably put this behind enemy lines. And, uh, you know, for instance, let's see on this map over here, a beacon. You probably could put a beacon maybe on this side, the house over here. Because most people come running through this way towards the front line. So you might be able to get away with a beacon here or maybe sneakily put one in the corner of the map where people are not going to go and they won't, you know, maybe detect it. And units don't normally auto fire on it. As you saw, we, we spotted the beacon, but our units didn't auto fire on it. So uh, only if you you know that's the only way you can kill it is if you if you manually target it and, and shoot it down. Uh, also, want to know that we've got to call on a paratrooper squad. So if you want to call them in, you know within your own vision, the the, the ring is um, uh, small. And if you wanted to call them in fog of war territory, we haven't got uh, vision. Then the uh, the range is going to be a lot bigger. The, the drop spread is going to be a lot bigger. So again, here you go. See the difference there? No uh, fog of war. No fog of war, a lot smaller. And then finally with the beacon, much tighter when it comes to the drop. It's also worth knowing that the beacon doesn't cost any resources to make and you can only make three at a time. So on to, so Pathfinders themselves, um, they've got the ability to second beacon, hold fire, stick, accept ambushes. They haven't got any other abilities like the r and Pathfinders do. We'll go on to them with the, when we choose that another commander which gives you those different types of our Pathfinders. But these guys, they do have um, long range sniper rifles on them. As you can see, they've got like, uh, long scopes on which so that makes them quite good at taking out enemy snipers. So here we have some Pathfinders on hold fire. Let's say an enemy sniper came over. Pathfinders, you can see them, opens up. And you can see that they really quickly kill the sniper compared to other units. Now, paratroopers don't camouflage themselves. These guys are a six-man squad. They've got a couple of abilities. Okay, here's a passive ability. They have M9 bazookas are more effective when used by elite infantry, such as rangers and paratroopers. So, guys, we have three airborne troops here. 
Now, a standard airborne squad can upgrade with either Thompsons for 90 munitions or M19s for 120 munitions. So we upgrade these, they get four Thompsons, as we'll now see. Look, so I upgrade this squad, four Thompsons. That makes them really good at close quarters combat. Then we have the other squad, which we're going to upgrade with the two M19s, like so. That makes them good at medium distance, and it's still quite good at close range, but you want to, you know, prioritise these guys at medium distance now. And then you have a third airborne squad, which we've upgraded with uh, paratrooper zooks. Um, now, these zooks, you have to get like any other zooks. You'd go back to your base, you, you would upgrade them here for 50 munitions. You get two like so. And uh, because they're elite, they're an elite squad, um, they gain, like we said just a second ago, increased damage and penetration when they, when they got zooks. So these are your three types of uh, airborne squads. So we're then going to go on to the abilities for each, each ability upgrade. So... This airborne squad gets the ability to do a tactical assault, and this one over here does the ability to do suppression fire. And I'm now going to show you how those abilities work in action. So guys, here we have uh, an airborne squad ready to take out two grenadiers. Selection, owner, enemy. We're going to activate our prioritized fire ability, and you can see how quickly we absolutely just demolish these enemy units here. Like so. There you go. With, with tactical assault activated. But bear in mind that we do take, like, extra damage when that ability is active, okay? So it's like the volley fire from Rechelons. Um, it will, uh, you'll be more susceptible to receive fire, but you'll be able to dish it out more effectively as well. And it doesn't, uh, suppress like Rechelon fire does. It's just a lot, a, lot of da a lot of damage. So that's the ability there for the Paratrooper squad. So I would recommend using the Tactical Assault ability when you get in close quarters, you want to tread a lot of units. Or if you want to try and chase down a retreating squad and the units are about to pass pop right by you, that would be a good time to pop on. The tactical assault. Yes, you, yes. When you activate the ability, you become lots very, very slow. But um, you know, if a unit's shooting past you and then it's low, you with, even if it's you're slow, you might you should be able to do enough damage to wipe the unit before it gets past you. So here we have an airborne squad. They're going to fight two grenadiers. This is the one with the M19 selection. Owner enemy. We're activating the suppressing fire ability on this squad. It slows the enemy squad so they can't move faster, and it will also start being doing suppression as well. There you go. So suppressing this squad here. You see, the M19s are focused on this one. So if I was to get them to shoot this squad and then do the ability, the, the, they would then, they would, this other squad would then receive the suppression. So basically, it's on, the, on which squad the M19s are shooting at first, they will receive the suppression, okay? And because these guys were on the road, they are going to be pinned rather than these guys that were just uh, suppressed. So 20 munitions to use that suppressing fire ability. Now, paratroopers have their own abilities, um, which are the... Uh, cooked frag grenades, so they do not need grenades teched at the base. As you can see, we haven't teched grenades in the base, and they already have grenades, so that's their, you know, they are kind of a unique to them. Uh, they've also got timed explosive charge. This is like a, a like a, um, a demolition charge. So if I was to, like an enemy blob is to come around the corner, and they weren't expecting it, I'd put a demo, like a timed demolition charge down, and then I would try and plant that, and then run away as fast as I can so we don't blow ourselves up. And that basically acts like a demo charge. They come around and does a lot of damage and blows enemy units up. You could use this on enemy buildings, like uh, the battle group headquarters, the Schwer Panzer headquarters, the Mechanized. That's what, this is what that would be used for. Or to try and take out an enemy bunker or something like that. Or, for instance, a pack for, you know, one of those big pack guns that are on the map. So now, guys, I'm going to show off the other abilities. These uh, power drop the, uh, the MG and the anti-tank gun. So here we go. So if you want to power drop the MG... We do like that, so, and the anti-tank gun. Same thing again, when you drop it in, um, you'll have like a spread, and that spread will be tighter like with the uh, the beacon. So basically you put the power drop in, they come like this, they're not accrued, but I normally would recruit them with rational squads, guys. But what you can do is if you recruit them with airborne squads, now this is expensive, but if you do it, they'll they'll see, you know, be a bit more tankier than a rational squad. And uh, you can also, because it was an airborne squad that recruited it, you can reinforce from a beacon. Recru uh, reinforce this, uh, this anti-tank. I'll just wait for those paratroopers to come down. Like so. Back to the sixth man squad. HMG squad ready for action. And then re recruit that. And then, yeah, we can reinforce that with the, um, the beacon. But yeah, it's got a nice little thing to do. So there you go. you got your MG. And now, basically, these things are exactly the same as your standard 50 count and your standard anti-tank that you'd buy from your tier 2. Uh, and your tier 3, exactly the same, no difference to them at all. But as you notice, they cost, you know, using munitions mainly here to call these on, rather than manpower. So if you've got lots of munitions spare, it might not be a bad idea to drop these. And because you can drop them and they come uncrewed, this is great for team games. So let's say you're playing a 2v2 and your teammate was playing conscript spam. 
um, you could drop him an anti-tank gun and a machine gun, and then he wouldn't have to worry about going tier two to get uh, Maxims or Ziz guns. So, because he's using American equipment, some true Ren Len lease there for you. Now. Last ability, the really expensive P47 rocket strafing run. I will show you how effective this is. Enemy King Tiger comes on. Yeah, so here we have an enemy King Tiger. We're going to activate the rocket strafe ability next to the King Tiger. Then you look at the mini map, you can see that there's a like a target. So anything inside that target zone will get strafed by the, the planes. Here come the planes in now. And they do quite a bit, quite decent damage to, the, to the, the Tiger, especially when they come in from the rear. Like this one, this plane's coming in from the opposite angle. You can see getting rear armor hits in there, and they'll do quite a few runs and keep strafing. They'll last for another 30 seconds, so they'll probably get another two or three strafes in by the time that go ends. Now, if the King Tiger was to reverse and out of the out of the line of fire, then the planes will stop shooting it. And these planes can be shot down out of the sky. So, if enemy had used activated Schwer or had an AA half track, these planes would get shot out of the sky. Okay. Here comes the last strafe now from this plane. Okay. Now, a P-47 rocket strafe would be really effective in conjunction with a marked target ability from your teammate. So you mark target a big enemy tank, you would ram it with a T-34, or you try and damage its engine so it couldn't get away from the uh, strafing area from, from the planes. And uh, then, yeah, a mark target as well, and then the play would, you know, the, this tiger would die a lot faster, basically. So it's a nice ability to use if you wanted to take out a heavy enemy vehicle. So with the P-47 rocket strafe, guys, the planes will always prioritize the uh, the strongest vehicle that is in the area. So if I was to prioritize it here, they would not shoot the Pumas, they would shoot the King Tiger. And if I was to remove the King Tiger and maybe put a Kubel in instead, the, the planes would then shoot the Pumas and not the Kubel wagon, for instance, okay? It's also worth saying when I place down a P-47 rocket strafe, the rockets that miss the King Tiger will also damage nearby units. So if the planes come in, you see, you see the infantry here. You see the infantry nearby to get some AOE splash damage from that. So you want to make sure that when a PV's P-47 rocket strike is coming down, when you're playing Axis, you want to make sure your infantry is spread away from your most valuable tank in that area, because otherwise your infantry is more likely to take damage as well, okay? So one more thing about the P-47 rocket strafe, guys, is that you can only target it where you've got vision. So if I was to put the Fog of War on, right, and uh, I, was place this, I was trying to plant the ability down, this is, look, I can't do it because I haven't got vision. So basically what I would do is I would get myself a recon run or ask my teammate to do a recon run to give vision. Then the P-47 rockets will come down. Now if I was to target this, um, you know, if I was to go, for instance, uh, put Fog of War back on for a second, then put put the planes down, and then toggle, then turn the fog of war off. So you, let's say we lost vision of the enemy vehicles. The planes would initially fire, I believe, if the, they they see the, the as they as they if they're coming in for a strafe, and the the vehicle was to then suddenly go out off um, into the fog of war. I think the plane would still come in and strafe the target, but if they can't have vision and they then they're not coming in for the one strafe, the planes won't fire. As you can see now, the planes are circling overhead. They can't see what to shoot at, so they're not going to to, to, um, to bombard the area. So one other thing, guys, I just want to quick, quickly say is that if the planes are circling overhead and don't have any the shootout, they will actually leave the area quicker than they're supposed to. So you see 23 seconds here, 21, 20. So now the planes are heading off the map, and they should the ability should still be active for the next few seconds, next 10 or so seconds, but it's they, they've gone off the map, the ability's going to immediately reset. Like so. So... That's a really important there. So if you lose vision, the planes won't come in for, 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 the, for, the, for the next straight. So they should do at least three runs. So um, there you go. Hopefully you learned something there. So guys, just to end with, let's just go through a quick build or you might want to do with playing uh, Airborne Company. So here we have some units out. So basically you start with the rare ones. I'd probably go maybe Pathfinder, Rifle, Rifle, Med Truck. Then you'd probably want to go into Captain. And then once you've got Captain out, because you've got this company, you can power drop in a machine gun, so you never have to detect LT if you decide to go for captain, and vice versa if you decide to go captain, you could power drop an anti tank gun if you need to. So you never need to, to back tech, basically, uh, which is quite nice. But I always generally try, you know, if you're going to pick this command, I would always pick captain because you can get yourself the anti tank gun. The pack house is amazing right now, so you probably would go for that. So you go, so again, so rifle, rifle, um, pathfinder, med truck, captain, AT gun if you're behind, you need a cancer, a panzer two or something. Then you go for the pack howitzer or get your own AA half trick out. 
Then Airborne Squad would probably be around the time you get three CPs or something. You get your first Airborne Squad, then you upgrade it to Thompson's. Or you'll give it um, M19s based on how well you're doing or, or like what, you know the, the situation. So if you want to get up nice and close to person or wreck some, some units, then the Thompson's would be good to get. Uh, M19s if you fancy a long range engagement. So let's say your opponent is going Panzer Grenadier spam. You might want to opt to go for M19s because then you'd do better... Um, a range against those units than if you'd gone for Thompsons and tried to rush in because Panzer Grenadiers would wreck you because um, they, they excel at close range and they don't do so well at long range. So that's, that's you know, for instance, what you, why you would tech a certain way. Uh, and then uh, once you've got the uh, your anti-tank gun out and your captain out, you probably want to go for the Major and then either go for Sherman. If you're if you're ahead, you want to kill, you know, the enemy's got lots of infantry and not much armor. Then if you're maybe behind, you're up against a Tiger or something heavy, then you want to get the Jackson out. If you're probably spamming support weapons, maybe make a Howitzer and Mortar Carriage. I mean, if you already have a pack howitzer out, it's basically the same thing, but on wheels, to be honest. Um, and uh, if you want to save your fuel up for maybe, you know, a Sherman or a Jackson instead, maybe invest the manpower in making a second pack howitzer rather than making a second mortar uh, uh, carriage, because then you can invest the fuel that you save into, like, a, a different tank. So there you guys go. That's the, basically a build that you want to do. And obviously with the, with the Major and the ambulance, you, you then push up with that and make a forward retreat point, point closer to the front line uh, at some point. And then maybe you recruit the... Um, the 50 cal here with your echelons, because that you know the reason why is because they were you know the cheapest to reinforce. So there you go, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did like it, please do like and subscribe and all the yada yada stuff. And I hope to see you in the next one. Cheers. Hey guys, if you liked that video and you want to see more content like that, uh, please do try and if you can afford it, support me on Patreon. Um, here's my Patreon on, on online right now. Um, basically, I will po keep posting more content on here. I've got membership tiers, as you can see. You'll go to my membership. So with you, with your pledges, you can do uh, earn certain things. So you get a with the basic pledge, you get a, a say in what I what I make. Uh, Ten dollars or more, you can join me on uh, Teamspeak or Skype or Discord for a friendly chat or advice and get your replay analysed. For fifteen dollars with, with a pledge, you can play with me with Sub Saturday. But you could do that anyway if you subscribe with me on Twitch with a for much less for four ninety nine. Um, you, with uh, pledging $20, you get a Happy Hands Company Heroes Community Mug. $30, you receive a two-hour coaching session. Uh, and 40 or more, you'll get um, Company Heroes 2 t-shirt delivered to your address as the community t-shirt. I've got still got a few of them made, and I can always order in more if I need to. So I hope you guys uh, will show your support, um, you know, even if you can't afford to, you know, even just liking and subscribing and just spreading the word of mouth about my content is, is you know, support enough. So thank you very much, guys. If we manage to reach... A hundred dollars um, for, for for the patron. I will start churning out these commanded videos once a week for sure. Um, but yeah, there we go.